on Thursday, but happy Thanksgiving to you, from us to you, amen, amen. tell your neighbor happy Thanksgiving, amen, amen, amen. hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen, I'm going to just spend a few moments to show you a few things in scripture, I endeavor to be brief so we can eat, but we can't take, this, we can't take the aroma for too long. You know that we can't we can't we can't take it but so we're gonna be fast so we can eat that food. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor God is good. God is good. Amen. If you didn't realize that with the food this morning you will find out. That's right. Amen. <laughs> I say you will find out. Amen. Amen. So I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about the importance of Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse 18. Because a lot of things happen to us as we, we, we go through the process of life. We almost at times forget to be thankful. We, we forget to, to emphasize what, what is happening in our lives. We, at times we don't even recognize that it's God doing something in our lives. We don't even realize that we can stop and say thank you. We at times we take it for granted. I told you guys a story one time, long time ago. I remember that I said it. I, I went with a lady who was in church here at the time. You know, that was a couple of years ago. You know, she she was supposed. If I remember the story correctly, she was supposed to go downtown. I think she stopped by here. I was here praying. And she was looking for the right to go. I said, it's okay. Wait for me. I'm good. Don't bring. I'll drop you. I'll drop you downtown. If that's the, if I remember correctly. So I took her downtown. On our way back, we drove. I'm going to drop her off. She, she had, she, she couldn't find her phone. So I said, don't panic. We're going to pray. God will show us the phone. You know, ain't, ain't go, you know, in our kingdom we have angels. Amen. We also have ministry experience. So we'll find the phone. Don't panic. So we prayed. I held her hand in the vehicle. We prayed, and then we we tried to trace her movement where she would have been before I met her. So we finally went back downtown. And f interesting story. We went back downtown, and then we went to the window, the counter where she went to pay for something, and. That's the only place she had been. I mean, she's thinking like, but I can't remember any other place. But somebody came and said she found there's a, a new cell phone in the bathroom. Long story short, she got the phone and she began to, I just, I listened to her talk. There was no thankfulness to God. Now, all of a sudden, she started, you know, imagining how she got the phone. Maybe somebody, I just started to stop. I said, you remember we just prayed? In a few minutes, you forgot that we prayed, that God had given us the cell phone back. But, but that's not just a story. That's a story for most of us. Yeah. We pray, pray, when it, when, when it happens, we forget that it was God who did it. Yeah. We cry and say, oh, this needs to happen. When it happens, no, you, you can scientifically figure out how it happened at the time. Yeah. You completely forget that before you pray, signs did not work. And the Bible even says that, you know, in the last days, one of the signs that you'll find is that people will be very unthankful. Yeah. This scripture says, in everything, give thanks. In everything. Somebody say in everything. Yeah. You see, he didn't try to qualify how, what the thing is or how good it is or if it, if it is really turning out good, then you begin to think. It's in everything. It means things may look so bad. God says, your only response that is required of you is to be thankful. That is a tough thing. He didn't say whatever it is you're going through is good. He said, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And God is not saying what you're going through is the will of God. No, he said your response of thanksgiving is the will of God. 
Are you listening to me? God didn't say, oh, if something bad is really happening to you, that's the will of God. He says, no, the way you're going to respond to what you're going through, how thankful you are to God, how careful you are to find reasons to be thankful in what you're going through is the will of God for you at the time. Amen? Amen. In other words, everything may be falling apart. But I know that the posture of my heart is to be thankful to God. He said, that's the will of God. You know why God said that's his will? Because he knows that you already have everything that will work out. God knows it will work out. You don't know it at the time, but God knows it will work out. So he says, be thankful. Tell somebody, be thankful now. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. He said, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen? Amen. May you cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving. Yes. May you know how to be in the will of God. Yes. If I was praying this morning, I came a little early, I was praying in the office, and I felt in my heart that some of you sitting here, what you're praying for, what you're believing for, your miracle is wrapped up in your thanksgiving. As you begin to thank God, as you begin to thank God this morning, there will be a release of that which you're believing God for. Yes. Amen? Amen? You know, most people have, have developed the attitude of, you know, if they're facing an issue, they rather complain. They rather ask prayer like this. Father, why is this not working? Why is that not working? Why is that, you know, all the wise? God is telling you, be thankful instead. Amen? Amen. The word thanksgiving comes from a Greek word, you know, you, you, most of you have heard the word eucharist. That's the that's the Greek word for thanksgiving. Eucharistio is a Greek word for thanksgiving, which means you know to be grateful and to express gratitude. Someone say I'm grateful. grateful. Come on, say I'm grateful. Tell yourself that you're not saying it to me. Say I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Your heart don't want to be grateful, but tell your heart that you're grateful. I know people say you have to follow your take, just follow your heart. Don't follow your heart. Lead your heart. Amen? Amen? Because your heart at times will want to be thankful. But tell your heart that we have to be thankful. Amen? Amen. Come and say, I'm thankful. I'm say, I'm grateful. I'm full of gratitude. Say, I'm full of gratitude. Say, my thank, my thank is full. My thank is full. Hallelujah. Say, my thank is full. Amen. There's room for nothing else. My heart is rejoicing. I believe God. Things are working out. See, that kind of attitude is what attracts miracles and testimonies in your life. Amen? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning. See, in everything, so in whatever phase we are in, in our lives, whatever it is we're facing at the moment, it's never a wrong time to give God thanks. There's never a time you give thanks and it's a wrong time. Amen? So let me give you a few minutes to just raise up your hands and just thank God as you're seated. Go, go ahead and thank God. Thank God. Come on, go ahead and thank God. Thank God this morning. Go ahead and thank God. Hallelujah. Thank Him. Hallelujah. In everything and at any time, in every way, in the midst of every circumstance, you give thanks to God. You give thanks to God in everything. Because your thanksgiving will activate a release of anything that you're expecting to see manifest. It will release it. It activates a release. It is a release button in the realm of the spirit. For whatever you're believing for, your thanks, you will release it. Not your complaint. Your thanks, you will release it. In the name of Jesus. So me again, I'm thankful. I want you to hear yourself. Let, let your whole heart be saturated with this. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Thanksgiving is a dangerous mystery in the economy of God. It is, it is a key. It is a powerful key. Yes. Amen? That times you pray and pray and pray and things are not working. I, I'm advising you to begin to thank God. Just begin to thank God. Thank God. See, find reasons to thank God. Somebody say, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, somebody was attacked down the street and, and, and they pierced them with knife, you know, last night. You know, go home and thank God that the knife was a brand new knife. That was not rusty. I'm telling you. 
Look for reasons to thank God. Yes, yes. Find it, find it. Look for reasons why you should be thankful. Don't look for reasons for, to complain and why things are not working. Yes. You will never produce results in your life like that. You will be stuck in a little corner. You will find a way out. But if your mouth is filled with thanksgiving, hallelujah, thanksgiving will be a fountain that will produce things for you. It will pull out all the things that God has kept in you and it will begin to flow. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, it is a weapon in the realm of the spirit. It is a weapon. It is a weapon. It is a weapon. So we're going to talk about seven reasons why you should be thankful and then we're done. We'll go eat. Seven reasons real quickly why we should be thankful. And I'm going to be fast. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. You know the reason why. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Help me tell you about thanking is a spiritual thing. Thanksgiving is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing to be thankful. To be thankful. To be thankful. It's a spiritual thing. It's not just it's not just words coming from your mind. It's a spiritual thing to be thankful. It's to be th- because it makes no sense that God is asking you to thank in everything. Some things will not make sense. People will look at you being thankful and think you're crazy. How can you be thankful when you're losing things? How can you be thankful when things are not working out? How can you be thankful when things are falling apart? Seemingly. But he who is wise in the spirit knows that that is the perfect time to give God thanks. In fact, that is is the appointed time. Because it's cheap for everybody to give thanks when everything is working out. What distinguishes you is that you're going to be thankful when things don't look to be working out. Everybody can thank God when everything is working out. Those who don't even believe God can be thankful when things are working out. But I want to just one of the key things you'll find out is that demons are not thankful. Have you ever seen in, where in scripture that the enemy ever thank, thank anybody? So you don't want to identify with that. You never find a single scripture where wickedness was thankful. It's a trait not of our kingdom. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Say again, I'm thankful. Hallelujah. So the first reason why we should be thankful is that it is the will of God. That's God's will. You're looking for God's will in a situation. God's will in that situation is thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. You, you are in the midst of something. You are trying to find out how. You know what's the will of God? In, what is God's will in this? He, you know His will. His will in that situation, circumstance, is for you to be thankful. Amen. Because as you begin to get thankful, you begin to be full of gratitude. Your heart is rejoicing in God's goodness. You, you know, you say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Because even though things look like this now, I know it's working out. You know, your mouth is expressing what your heart is. It's an overflow from your heart to your mouth. As you begin to go, I'm telling you, thanks will pave the way. It will pave the way. Hallelujah. So it is the will of God. 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 The second thing is that Thanksgiving releases God's rule and His kingdom over your situation. So it releases God's rule, it releases God's reign, and it releases God's kingdom. Jesus taught us to pray like this. In Matthew chapter 6, he said, he said, pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So if, if, I, if, I, if I'm thanking God, I'm doing God's will. If I'm thanking God, I'm in God's will at the time. At that moment, I'm doing God's will. What will happen is that he will release God's rule and reign over the situation. Hallelujah. God will take control. As I begin to thank God, things are not looking well. I begin to thank God. I begin to thank God. It will release his reign over it. It will release his kingdom and his rule over that circumstance. Tell yourself, I have what to give. And of course, he said, make them sit down. 
make it, let's, make it, and, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, someone say he gave thanks. He gave thanks. Hallelujah. He distributed to the people. And you know where my confusion is. You know, you know that you know that thing is five loaves or two. Five, you know, five loaves and two fishes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, say five loaves. You know, five. And, and listen, Philip began to say, Philip said, Philip said, Master, you know, we found a boy in the crowd. I'm trying to cut it short. I don't want to read the whole thing. We found a boy in the crowd. We don't have We found a boy who had a little meal, five loaves and two fishes. You know. And, and, and they asked a question to, to the Lord. He said, what is that to this multitude? Five loaves. You know, you, you, you can say, you know, this is all I have. What can it even do? Amen. He said, this is all I have. What can it even do in relation to what can be handled? Look at all I have. Philip said, Master, there's a five. We have there's something now. There's five loaves and two. But what can what is it in you know compared to the need of five thousand plus people? He said, What is it? That's what you're thinking. See, all I have, you know, what is that? What is that in compared to, you know, what can my small contribution be? You know, in serving God, if I, there are multiple people serving, if this small that I can give, what is it in compared to that? You don't know. Jesus never responded to that question. He said, make them sit down. Tell your neighbor, sit down. Sit down. It's well. It's well. So, no, don't look at it. Don't look at what you have. He said, make them sit down. Never responded to that question. And he took it and gave thanks. Hallelujah. As he gave thanks, he handed to them. They kept feeding. Someone say multiply. Say multiply. Thanksgiving is a seed for multiplication. He took the five loaves and two fish and gave thanks and distributed. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah with me. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That little that you have is a seed. I say it's going to be multiplying. It will be multiplying in your hands. As you, as you saturate it with thanksgiving, it's multiplying. It's multiplying. It's multiplying. Every need will be met. Every need will be met. Every need will be met. In the name of Jesus. Don't look at how much you have. Fill it with thanksgiving. Amen. It is, it is, a, it is a seed. It is a seed for multiplication. You're thinking, how am I ever going to make that up? You have a secret with you. It is to thank God. So even though we're in a season of thanksgiving, it's not, it's not supposed to be a seasonal thing. It should be your life. It should be your life. It's your, it should be an attitude of your life. It should be an attitude of your life. Because you know that I'm a man, a woman on a mission. I have to plant seeds for a harvest. Amen? 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 I'm found in a troubling situation. I'm in a loop corner. I'm trying to figure out how things are going to work. Fill it with thanksgiving. Yes. Saturated with thanksgiving. Don't complain. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Thank God for it. Yes. Amen? Amen? So Father, thank you. I'm happy. There's a way out for me. I'm thankful there's a way out for me. Eh? The psalmist says, though I go through the valley. See, David had all reasons to say, Father, look at this valley. You think he didn't see the valley? Look at how dark this place is. Look at that. I've been ostracized. There's no help for me. But he said, no, even though I go through the valley, I fear no evil. Hallelujah. See, it, this life is an attitude. You put an attitude to it. Christianity, those who really succeed in this life, you develop an attitude with you. He says there is a valley. And it has it's covered with darkness. But though I find myself in it, I fear no evil. For the Lord is with me. Amen. Amen. His rod and his staff that comfort me. Hallelujah. So no matter how deep your, your valley is, how dark your situation is, tell your never put thanksgiving to it. Mix it up with them. Mix it up. Mix it up. Mix it up with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. Jeremiah chapter 30, on the same point, 30 verse 19 and 20. Jeremiah 30, 19 and 20. God says, 
and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. Someone says it's proceeding from me. Come on, tell yourself that is coming from me. Thank, thanksgiving is flowing from me. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. You see, thanksgiving goes out, God said, I'm multiplying. And they shall not be few. And I will also glorify them. And they shall not be small. Hallelujah. Say, so thanksgiving is flowing from me. Come on, say, it's flowing from me. It's flowing from me. As it's going out, God is multiplying. Your thanksgiving is an indication to God that it's time for multiplication. As you are thankful, as your heart is it, it, it's coming out like a fountain, God is engaged in multiplying your life. Do not complain. Complain is not of God. You know why the Israelites got stuck in the wilderness? They forgot that they came out. Listen. All that caught their attention was that they were in the wilderness. Imagine these men and these women who were suffering every day. Making bricks and more in the hot sun from early in the morning to late in the night. In fact, in fact, the, 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 their work got even harder when Pharaoh said, do not give them the material to make the bricks anymore. Let them find the materials themselves and then, because before they were given the materials and then they will make the bricks. So the work was hard enough. But after Moses heard from God and went and spoke to Pharaoh and let my people, Pharaoh said, these people, they, want to, they think they don't, they don't have enough work. Let's multiply if they work, if they get occupied, they won't be thinking of going anywhere. So their work got harder because now God in Pharaoh said, do not give them the material. Now they will find the material and produce the same amount of bricks. But imagine after that mighty deliverance, they're out of Egypt. They forgot that they came out. Then the wilderness, they're complaining that there's not garlic and leeks to eat. Look at the human heart. People who have been delivered with such a mighty deliverance. That complaint of garlic. How many of you even like garlic? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you to see the folly. I'll show you some. That's the folly of being unthankful. It's the madness that creeps into your heart when you're full of ingratitude. All of a sudden, people who have been delivered from torment. Garlic is calling them back. Garlic. And they were, they were not ashamed of saying, saying we missed the garlic. <laughs> so you want to go back into captivity for garlic. And they're whipping you and you're working. They're whipping you and you're working. You want to go back for garlic's sake. May the wisdom of God really work in you. May you not make silly decisions like that. Stupid decisions. That, may your mind be illuminated with the wisdom of God. You'll be amazed at how darkened the mind of man can get. You will find that I will show you that. They never recognize the fact that they have been delivered. Instead of complaining in the world, they would have been saying, Father, thank you. It's hard here, but it was harder there. You know, it's difficult now, but we know how Egypt was. We know we're being whooped. We could not even work at our own pace. We had the master behind us whipping us as we're working. So thank you that even, even though it's hard here, nobody is behind our back. In that Thanksgiving, they would have found their way to the promised land. May you find your way to all God has promised for you. In the name of Jesus. God says, I will multiply, as thanksgiving proceeds from them, I will multiply them and they shall not be few. Amen? Amen. As a church, we are thanking God. Amen? As we are thanking Him, He's multiplying us. Amen. Come on, say, we are thanking Him, He's multiplying us. Amen. Some of you don't believe that, I believe it. As we are thanking Him, He's multiplying us. He said, as He proceeds, and multiply, they shall not be few. Let me just prophesy to you. Let me tell you this. I don't care who says what. Let them go to the radio and talk. In the next five years, you will not recognize gospel God. I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. I'm telling you. It, 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 see, your talking don't matter. It don't, it's not going to do anything. In fact, you will help us. 
As you're talking, it will help us. Hallelujah. The wind will be blowing. Hallelujah. It will help us and talk. Make flyers. Make flyers. Don't just talk. Make flyers and paste it. You'll be working for us. Uh, don't mind that. Listen, listen. <laughs> Oh, listen. But now he said they shall not be they shall not be small. In other words, something had come against them and that caused them to be small. They had been attacked. This is the, I won't give you the don't time to give you the history behind it. Israel had been in captivity, they had been attacked. So they had they have, they, have, they have been destroyed now, their number is few. God said, but even though they are few at this time, they should not thanksgiving should proceed from their mouth. It should proceed. Because as they are engaged in thanksgiving, I'm engaged in multiplication. Come on, say, God is the God of multiplication. He's multiplying my life. He's multiplying my life. He's multiplying my seed of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at verse 20. Verse 20 is the next point. Is the next point. While, we, while we're engaged in thanksgiving. He said, their children also shall be as, as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established. You see that? Tell your neighbor, my life is being established. I shall not be moved by anything. My life is established. My foundation is solid. My feet are expanded in the name of Jesus. And listen to this point. God said, I will punish all those that oppress them. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> so Thanksgiving... It's a weapon of warfare. Put that down. God said, as they are thanking me, I'm punishing the oppressors. So as you engage in thanks, you get what God is doing. So God is looking at who did this to these people? Hallelujah. Who did so as you are thanking God? God said, Okay, now I'm gonna find all those who came against them and punish them. Imagine that. He said, I will punish. He said, You, your responsibility is to be thankful. While you are engaged in thanksgiving, I'm engaged in punishing your oppressors. You don't, your business is not to attack your oppressors. Your business is to be thankful. As you're fulfilling that, you're being thankful. You, you are engaging in, in, in rejoicing and exalting God. God is looking for all those who are, who are coming again, who are trying to destroy you. He's, he's looking for them. He said, where are those people? So I will punish their oppressors. That's what, I didn't say that, that's it. Say it's a weapon of warfare. Come on, say thanksgiving is a weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. The next point is that thanksgiving secures peace, rest, and wholeness. Say it secures peace. So say it with me. Secures peace, rest, and wholeness. Philippians chapter 4, put us verse 6. I thought I was going to be fast. We're almost there. It, 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 says, it says, be careful for nothing. That word, be careful, is anxious. Anxiety, be careful. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. It's about in everything, by prayer and supplication, with, so with thanksgiving. You, if you're writing, you can put that in quotes. You see, he, he, he make sure you did not forget that part. He said, when you come to pray, if, if, if things are coming against you, say, do not be anxious. Don't let anxiety overtake you. He said, do not be anxious for anything. In other words, don't matter what it is. Don't let it overwhelm you. God is giving you instructions of the Spirit. Yes. Don't let anything overwhelm you. Amen? Amen? No matter how bad it is. See, let me tell you something. Even if you feel a course. And your whole system is threatening you to stay up all night and cry. If you're going to stay up all night, stay up all night thanking God. Okay, let me just put it, let me bring it real down. You failed it already anyway. So if you cry all night, what happens? I'm giving you a little wisdom here now. You see that? You already failed it. The crying all night will not change it. So if you're going to stay up all night, use it for something constructive. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. If you're going to stay up all 
on my text and Father, thank you. Because even though I failed this course, I'm passing. It's well with me. Your will will not be distorted. It will not be twice. It will not be twice. I'm telling you, if you're going to stay up, stay up thanking God. That's what I tell you. When I, I used to be in college, when I take exam, I don't discuss with nobody. My, my, my paper is already gone. The discussion don't work. I'm helping some of you. You know, people come out of class, they want to ask you, how did you write that number B? What was your answer? And then, and then, and then you said this man, said, no, no, no. My answer was this. And then you find out that four people had the same answer, or you're the only one with a different answer. Now you can't sleep and study for the next exam. You can't even study. Now there's no room for, the, for you to study for the next exam. Because now anxiety is setting, you're troubled, you're, you're thinking, oh, now you're thinking, oh, I'm really in trouble. But you, you put yourself in there. What's the point going to ask people? Your paper is already gone. Amen? Amen. So I refuse to be anxious. Come, I refuse to be anxious. Hallelujah. My life is filled with thanksgiving. My life is filled with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I refuse to let anxiety kick in. He said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Means everything, including the one you think they're giants in your life. He said, be, be everything. By in other words, you have just one course. Pray, put petitions, and put the, you know, the, 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 the icing, which is thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. So you put it in quote with thanksgiving. So, so your prayer is not complete if thanksgiving is not there. Are you listening to me? Your praying to God is not complete. With, see, in fact, based on what Jesus has already done for us, at least 50% of your prayer should be thanksgiving. The Bible says he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things. In fact, when Paul came to the church and in Corinth and they were arguing, you know, who is better than this, you know, who is... Paul said, why are you fighting and competing? He said, all things are yours. Amen? Amen. Someone said, all things are mine. You have not been outrageous here. He said, all things are mine. Come on, all things are mine. He says, all things. He said, there's no reason to fight with one another. All things are yours. It's only blindness that will cause you to, to be fighting with people because if you could see, you would see that all things already belong. Everything belongs to you already. Success belongs to you. It's yours. Victory is already yours. All the breakthroughs are already yours. Amen? Amen. Mm. So Thanksgiving secures peace, rest, and wholeness. Let's read that. Put us the next verse, verse 7. Let your request be made known unto God. And listen to that. And the peace of God. Hallelujah. The rest of God. The rest. The peace of God. The shalom, shalom. The wholeness. The completeness. The rene. The peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding. There is no reason for you to be peaceful and rest. Hallelujah. There is no reason. There is no reason for you to be at rest. But you are at rest. Because you have released thanksgiving. You're releasing, it, it, it will keep your heart. That word they keep is a military word. It will guard your heart. It will put a barrier around your heart and your mind. You see why your heart and your mind gets worried too quickly? You haven't engaged in thanksgiving. Because as you begin to thank God, peace is released. As thanksgiving goes, peace is released. And the peace comes as a military barrier to guard your heart and your You cannot be thankful and be worried at the same time. You know that. You cannot be full of thanksgiving and then you're, you're, you're worried at the same time. You can't. Because as you're thanking God, your tank is full. Your tank is full. There's no room for anxiousness. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. There's, there's God in your heart and your mind. The things that enter your mind and trouble your life is because you're not involved in thanksgiving. Tell yourself again, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm full of thanksgiving. Come on, come on, tell your neighbor I'm full of thanksgiving. You're going to defend your mind and you're going to defend your heart. You know, you know, in, 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 in Proverbs chapter 4, 
verse 20, he says, you know, going there, he said, guard your heart with all diligence. You see that same word, guard? God said, guard your heart with all diligence. You see, God is putting an emphasis. He said, guard your heart with all carefulness. Guard it, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, if your heart is not guarded, your life will be distorted. Amen? Are you with me? If your heart is not guarded, your life will not follow God's plan. Because things will enter your heart and disturb your life. Somebody will say something to you as you're going down to class or going to work or in the market or you know, at Walmart. Somebody will say something to you and then you go home. You're like, why did they say that? In fact, let me, let me bring it in more than times. You will see somebody's status. <laughs> you see somebody's status on WhatsApp. And they, they wrote something ignorantly. But now you're thinking, they're saying that about me. <laughs> and they start thinking, but why are they saying that about me? <laughs> Guess what's happening? You open your heart to unnecessary complications. He said, guard your heart with all diligence. You know, everything you have, use it to guard your heart. Because the composition of your heart will reflect in your life. Guess what you would do if your heart is exposed like that? You would do go on your own, your own status. <laughs> and post something, I hope that they're going to see it. In fact, you add a cliche that they will, they will quickly identify that you're talking about them. Now you're engaged in trouble, they were not talking about you in the first place. Am I talking to somebody? Your heart was too exposed. Your heart was too exposed. God said, guard it. And the way you guard it is by thanksgiving. As, as you thank God, the peace of God will guard your heart. In other words, I'm not worried about anything. Whatever you say, my heart is guarded. Whatever you talk, my heart is If you post it, my heart is guarded. Even if you put my name attached to it, my heart is still guarded. Because I know my life comes from my heart. It comes from within. I'm protecting God's life in me. Amen. My stream must flow clear, uninterrupted, unperturbed. It must flow with God's destiny for me. Amen. Amen. I say you will fulfill every destiny God has said concerning your life. Amen. Nothing will disturb that. As you begin to engage in thanksgiving, nothing will stop your life from flowing forward. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're almost about to eat. Hallelujah. That's why I stay, let me tell you something, one of the, the people, are the kinds of people I stay away from, complainers. Those who go behind and never, the moment I sense it, I take like 10 steps behind. The moment I sense you're that kind of person who cannot talk to me, but you can talk to people, I'm gone. I'm telling you, it's poisonous because you're polluting everywhere you go. The moment I sense that you, you are concerned about something, but you haven't spoken to me, but you are speaking to other people, I'm gone. You will not find me in that kind of place. I just put my wall. I said, I'm not going to deal with that. Because you, you have more freedom in my absence. Yeah? If you are interested in really tackling the issue, you would have spoken to me. The fact that you chose other people to lay your complaint about things concerning me, I'll let you keep on doing that. I'm not involved in it. Amen? I've done that for a long time. It's to save my life, to save God, to guard my heart. Amen? So I don't get into unnecessary complications with people. Guard my heart. Amen? I'm concerned about what God is doing in me. I'm concerned about God's purpose for my life. Amen? I'm concerned about the workings of the Spirit in my heart. Nothing I will allow to interrupt that. Hallelujah. At times it's harder than other times to guard it. Because some things you hear people say, they're sharp. They pierce you more. But 
you still have to endeavor to guard your heart. Amen? As a pastor, trust me, pastors are easy blow for everybody. Even people who don't know that in the Bible, they want to correct pastor. People feel like they know more than pastor. Pastors are easy point for everybody. The moment God shows you one thing, all of a sudden you start, the first thing that comes to your mind is, I know that more than pastor. Easy target. The, let me tell you, let me just say this to you. Pastors are the, are the easiest thing for people to discuss at home yes. about. Yes. Look, everybody's quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not guilty you in this house. I'm telling you the truth. Man, that killed it right there. Everybody just went, whoo. <laughs> uh, that's a prophetic word. It came right home. It came home. It came home. Easy target for everybody. Those who, you know, at times you, you want to, you want to vibrate. I'm thinking, Father, if I'm not a pastor, where is this kind of person come from talking about me? Yeah. That's my flesh want to talk. Yeah. I said, I, 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 I've, I've quarreled with God. I'm like, if you did not call me, this kind of person calling my name in the street, it will never happen. Yeah. We'll never cross paths yeah. like that. That's my flesh want to, you know, like, what, what am I doing? Giving myself like I, I've said that I'm not hiding it to you, from you. I'm like, if I was not doing this, who is this kind of person running and talking about me? Where would I have? I mean, where would I have come across that? Then I quickly realize it's not about me. Amen. I say, Father, you know when I, I trust me, I have my times in private with God, and I'm gonna say, Father, I'm sorry for thinking like that. <laughs> help me do this. <laughs> it's hard, but help me. You know, I know that I know the talk, but just help me keep myself. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Can't you see it be helping me? Yeah. Come on, celebrate him for helping me. Hallelujah. 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 My heart is God, trust me. It's it, it's a barricade. It's a waterproof. <laughs> Next point. <laughs> Thanksgiving produces wholeness and completeness. I say it produces wholeness and completeness. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Luke 17, verse 11. And it came to pass, you know, you know the story, I mean, I'm cutting the story short for time. The story of the ten lepers. You know, they happen to be in the same environment like Jesus. They probably heard about Jesus, the thing Jesus has done, the, the healings, the miracles, the blind eyes that have opened. They've heard a lot of things. And then Jesus is coming around. They run to Jesus and say, you know, they wanted to be healed. Leper, lepers. You know, the story of lepers is that lepers are outcasts. They kept out of the city. They can't come in the city and mingle with everybody because leprosy was contagious. It was not just contagious physically. It was spiritually unclean as far as the Jews were concerned. So a leper cannot worship with other people because it's considered an unclean disease. It pollutes spiritual space. So they were instructed to stay out of the city. So the outside, you know, and that person will chop off your fingers, it will, your toes, and your, I mean, your little digits and all of that. It will mess up things in your body. So they ran to Jesus and added on the desire to be made whole. The Bible says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through this, the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into, into a certain village, they met him ten men that were lepers, stood up here, they stood afar off. You see that? They stood afar off from a distance. And they lifted up their voices. They had to scream because they couldn't come close to him. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. You know, and, and when he saw them, he said unto them, he, he really said it to them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass as they went. He said, Go, because that was the law. If, if, if you're going to be not just healed, but received back into the assembly, the priest needs to approve you. That now you're no longer a leper. And then the signs that they have to look at. But Jesus just said, go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass as they went. Someone said, as they went. That's a very interesting So We don't have time to really, you know, dig into that. But they never stood and questioned Jesus that we're, we're not holy. How can we go show? You, you see that. Jesus just said, go. They did not question it. They did not say, ah, I need to wait to see everything whole first before I go. No, they went at the bidding of the word. Amen? 
as you take action, as you take the step, based on what God has said, your healing is in the action. You see that we've talked about here several. As you take the step, that's your healing because the step is a step of faith. Because you haven't seen any healing yet. Uh, because most of us want to wait, we want to wait until we see the healing. No, they went at the word of Jesus with no healing. Isn't that wonderful? Somebody say, that's marvelous. Come on, say that. I love that. I love this story. Jesus and God, they just wait. But listen to this word, because as you obey God in action, the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. So the miracle happened as they went. May you put some action to the word of God this week. Amen. Step out. May you step out. Step out by the word. Do not wait to see everything line up. Step out. As you step out, manifestation will follow you. I say it will follow you. It will follow you. Step out. Put action to the word. And manifestations will follow you in the name of Jesus. As a when they were cleansed, they were cleansed. Now it's marvelous. And now I'm one of them. Someone say one of them. One of them. When he saw that, he saw, he discovered it. So he was, clearly he was not, he was not healed before. So he discovered that he was healed. He turned back. Hallelujah. Someone say I'm turning back. And I'm going to give my thanksgiving. Come on, say I'm giving my thanksgiving. He turned back and with a loud voice. Hallelujah. He got, he, he with a loud voice. He did not thank God in the little corner with a loud voice. He glorified God. That's what I tell you, see. Those who really benefit from the word of God, those who are excited about the word of God. You receive it with gladness. You thank God with all passion. With a loud voice, he glorified and he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Thomas, I'm giving him thanks. Hallelujah. The man was healed now. He was, he was cleansed from the leprosy. In other words, the, the disease could not spread any further. The root of the disease was killed. So he was cleansed. But listen to what Jesus is going to say, verse 17. And Jesus answering said, Were they not ten cleansed? That tells you something. There's an expectation of thanksgiving from God. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is expecting Thanksgiving. Come on, that's right. So you know, He was waiting for it. He knew that it was going to be well, of course. So He's waiting for the response. He said, "Were they not ten? He's expecting Thanksgiving from you, from you, from you. There's an expectation in His heart for Thanksgiving from you." And as you begin to give him that thanks, this way you see what's going to happen. So we're not telling them, but where, where are the nine? Where are they? Where are they? You see, they're, they're rejoicing in their miracle. And forgot where the miracle came from. Yes. They are not found that return to give glory to God, said the stranger. I don't want to go into all of that. That's not our focus. But the man was not even a Jew. He was a one that was unqualified. I want you to tell somebody for me, my thanksgiving will qualify me. <laughs> you may not be the one that everybody thinks you are the one, but your thanksgiving, your thanksgiving, hallelujah, your thanksgiving. Listen, listen, and put us the next verse, and, 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 and they have not found that return to give them, and he said unto him, arise. See, the man is down crying and, and thanking Jesus, and thanking Jesus. I feel different. The pain of the disease is gone. You know, I feel like I'm well. It's gone. I'm, you see, Jesus said, arise. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Listen to this. Two different things. The man was cleansed. Now he's whole. And listen to this. Jesus said, your faith. So thanksgiving is an expression of faith. <laughs> Uh, in other words, things are not working, but I'm thanking God 
Because I'm moving by faith. I'm not looking at everything lining up. I'm engaged in thanksgiving because it's an expression of my faith. I know that things are working out. They may not look that way, but I know that they're working out. So I'm thanking God. Jesus saw that as faith. Yes. That's right. That's right. It says your faith has made you whole. This is the difference between healing and wholeness. The man had leprosy stopped in his tracks. The pain stopped, but the digits were still half. The leprosy had cut them. Wholeness means he woke up and everything was restored. Hallelujah! <laughs> Ten men were healed, one was made whole. May your thanksgiving make everything about your life whole on every side. I said there's completeness on every side. There is a wholeness and perfection and completeness in everything concerning your life by reason of your thanksgiving and glorifying God. In the, it's not enough to be healed. And the good news even further is that that wholeness is within your spirit. But as you begin to thank God, it's released. Hallelujah. It's released. Because Jesus is in you, the wholeness is within you, you're complete within you. But you may not be experiencing it. As you begin to release things, he opens doors for wholeness to manifest. I say you're whole on every side. I say you're whole on every side. As far as you're concerned, everything is complete. It's perfected in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your faith has made you whole. Your expression of thanksgiving has made you whole. It is well with you. Imagine when he met the other nine. And they're looking at him like, look at your fingers. Look at, I thought we all got healed the same way. He said, no, no, no. I added something else with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known. I'm full of thanksgiving. My heart is full of thanksgiving. My life is an expression of thanksgiving. I'm thanking God for the smallest things because I know my life is expanding by the day. There's multiplication. There's wholeness and completeness on every side. Because God has found a man on earth who will give him thanks and give him thanks and give him thanks and I'll never stop. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I see perfection and completeness on every side. It is released in everything that has your name. Perfection and completeness on every side. As far as you're concerned, there's perfection on every side. Everything that was not happening the way it was supposed to, I see it happening in the name of Jesus. Complete restoration on every side. Now, with one minute left, I'm going to show you quickly the results of being unthankful. Romans chapter 1 verse 21, real quickly and then we're done. Romans 1 verse 21. Romans 1 verse 21. Romans, Romans 1 verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. You see, people are saying, John, you, you have to, do, you have to, you have to, you have to, how do they say? You have to walk him up to thank God, to, for, you know, you have to walk him up, you know. See, he says, they knew God, but they weren't thankful. They did not glorify him as God. They didn't think glorified and they didn't put any value. Why am I, I mean, I'm okay, I'm in church. Like I said about the lady who thought the phone was just found. Don't put value that God was involved. You don't give him his place like if it's not of God. You think my life is just working, you know, we're real smart. In my family, we're real smart. And, and my, you know, we're really doing things well. Everything's working out. God, I'm, God is in no sentence. Because you think you figured out the system. Wait until the system will fail. Will find out what you trusted. They did not glorify him as God, neither were thankful. Listen to the effect of that. Listen to the effect of that. Their imaginations became vain. And their foolish hearts got darkened. 
you start devising all kinds of reasons why. You know, why things, you, all kinds of careless thoughts. You know, all kinds of, you know, you become desensitized yes. to the reality of God because you are not thankful. Your heart cannot recognize God in something. You become real passive as far as God is concerned because you were not used to thanking Him. You did not recognize the little things He had done. Now, even when He did the big things, you could not recognize it was Him. Your heart became desensitized. He said, your foolish heart got darkened. It got darkened. You could not perceive. Now you go by what people say. You cannot hear what God is saying because you're not engaged in thanksgiving. Amen? Thanksgiving will clarify things for you. It will clarify things for you. Their thoughts became futile and they got into confusion. They could not see their way forward. They lost direction because they were unthankful. May that not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Your heart is full with of thanksgiving. Your heart is rejoicing with God's goodness. You find reasons to thank God. And God is releasing grace upon you. Let's stand on your feet this morning. He's releasing grace.